Hey, what up? My name is Sky, like the big blue sky. And today I want to show you how to find thousands of local leads for your business using D7 Lead Finder. Now, the main problem that people run into when they use D7 Lead Finder typically is that when you pull these initial lists from the platform, it gives you business information. So it'll give you emails that are like info at, sales at, support at, and it doesn't give you the decision maker, their name, their title, the email for that decision maker. Sometimes it does, but it still it requires quite a bit of like manual searching and enriching of the contacts as you go. And so most people run into problems trying to make the data that you pull from D7 Lead Finder just usable in the first place. Because if you just start sending to the initial data that's in D7 Lead Finder, you're one, probably gonna get a ton of bounces. Um, but two, you're gonna be sending into inboxes that probably aren't monitored very often. So your reply rates are gonna be low, your deliverability is gonna suffer. You're probably gonna land in spam and maybe you'll even burn the inbox. So best practice is you wanna do some work on the front end to clean up these lists and make them usable for cold email. And the, the way that most people go about doing that is they hire teams of virtual assistants to manually go through hundreds and thousands of rows of contacts to clean it up. But what I wanna show you today is a more high leverage way that you can essentially get the same outcome, but without having to build a virtual assistant team. And the way that we're gonna do that is by leveraging AI and automation in the process so that we can still build these same lists, but in a fraction of the time for a fraction of the cost. So real quick, before we dive in, if you don't already have a plan on D7 Lead Finder, um, any one of these plans is gonna to be totally fine, but uh, my personal preference, I really like the professional plan. Of course, we are uh, a sales company, so we have a lot higher volume of leads that we pull, but the reason why I like this plan is because you get at least 100 daily searches, which is gonna allow you to pull a lot higher of a volume of leads, but then also a feature that I really like is the main category. And so you'll see uh, more specifically why this is important in just a second, but this makes it a lot easier to understand if these searches that you do in the platform, if the contacts that it's presenting you are, are accurate and how are they being categorized more specifically. So once you've purchased access to D7 Lead Finder, the first thing you wanna do to start building a list is to do an actual search. And the way that it's structured here is that you pick a keyword in a city. And so you can do um, a lead search or a bulk search. So you can search for multiple keywords or multiple cities um, all in one search. And just for simplicity's sake here, um, let's say I was looking for med spas in Palm Coast, Florida. So I'm not gonna run the search here live with you just because it takes a little bit of time, but we'll jump into a previously run search. And once it's complete, this is what it's gonna look like in your search. So as you can see, med spas, Palm Coast, Florida, and it gives you a bunch of really useful information. So we've got the company name, their phone number, it'll pull up business email addresses, websites, their LinkedIn page, whether or not they're running ads, all kinds of really useful stuff, but the main things that I want you to notice here, one, is that these are business email addresses, and so I'm not gonna show you a whole bunch today, unfortunately, because um, I don't want this video to get taken down, but um, a lot of the emails that you'll end up seeing in here are gonna be like info at generic company emails that you aren't gonna wanna send to for cold prospecting. And then the other thing is the category. And so as you can see, we searched for medical spas is the keyword, and we got a wide range of stuff here, everything from chiropractors to driving schools, right? And so if I didn't pay for this tier, I wouldn't see what some of these subcategories are. Um, and so step one actually in this list building process is I'll export this view as a CSV, and then I will filter uh, the categories alphabetically, and I will just start deleting everything that isn't um, exactly what I'm looking for. So once I've done that step, I'm gonna upload everything that I've already filtered through into a clay table to really begin uh, the contact enrichment process. So this is really broken up into two different steps. And step one actually is we're gonna use OpenAI to take a look at all of the emails that are in this list to find emails that clearly have someone's first name um, already in the email. Chances are if um, it pulled a business email, so if you remember back here, 
These are business email addresses. Chances are if it pulls a business email address and it's got someone's first name, it's probably the owner of the business or someone who's actually worth sending a cold email to as opposed, as opposed to someone who might not have any decision-making power at the company. And so the way that we do this is we will go ahead and we will feed all of those emails into OpenAI and this is the prompt that we give it. So we say, hey, you are a lead generation specialist that builds prospecting lists. Look at these emails and pull out any first names from the email. If you're unable to tell exactly what the first name is from the email, provide me with an output unknown, the output unknown. The only acceptable outputs are the person's first name or unknown. Do not provide me with the completion until you've double checked your work. Here's the email. And then boom, you can just run the entire column or the entire list and it will go ahead and it will pull out all of the first names for you. And so I've got this split up in a couple of different ways, but big picture, this is step one and, and the first way that you'll be able to start identifying like what are some workable emails that we can use from D7 Lead Finder. And once you've done that step, before you finish step one, what you'll wanna do is create this column here. And so it says LI plus URL. And so that stands for LinkedIn plus URL. And this is important for step two. And you'll see why in just a second, but basically the way that this works is we put a formula in here that says, I want you to find the company LinkedIn profile, or I want you to find the website URL. This um, website, either the LinkedIn profile or the website URL is gonna be used in step two to enrich for contacts. And so what I don't want actually is to combine those two values. So you need two different columns. So as you can see here, We've got the company LinkedIn profile, we've got the website URL, but not every cell has a LinkedIn profile. And so what I want to happen here is I want this cell to say, first, look for the company LinkedIn URL. If you find it, place it in this cell. If you don't find it, then look for the website URL. So we're not combining them, it's one or the other, but I want it to first look for this, then look for this, because this is gonna give me more accurate enrichment information in step two. So okay, once you've created this formula column, you'll wanna go ahead and create a new view. And in this view is essentially gonna be everyone who didn't have a very clear first name in their email. And so these are gonna be the rest of our contacts that we'll wanna go ahead and start to try to enrich for more um, email information to prospect. And so I tried to run both of these steps in the same table. I ran into some issues. Of course, you can get rid of some of the native columns from D7 Lead Finder before you upload, but um, I find it a lot easier to match the information back if I keep it together. So a lot of times I'll do this in two different steps. And so once I've got this view here all separated out, and I know that these are all the folks who didn't have a first name um, in their email, I'll export this view and I'll upload it into step two. And the only columns that I'm actually gonna upload into step two, I'm not gonna upload everything. I'm only gonna upload four columns. And it's gonna be the original email that was pulled from D7 Lead Finder, the LinkedIn plus URL column that you made in step one, the city, and the website URL. All of these columns are gonna be used for the rest of step two to enrich the rest of these companies for more contact information. It's, it's not gonna find everybody, but it's gonna find a decent amount of contacts to work with. And so the intent here actually in step two is to, to build this out one time with the right formulas. And then after this, when you're in clay, you can just duplicate this entire table and you'll be able to just upload more contacts into a table and it will automatically, like once you upload these contacts, boom, the rest of these columns are gonna run properly so you don't have to build this out over and over and over again. You can just duplicate and upload contacts and it will automatically run. And basically the way that this works is first, it's gonna look for a contact at the company using their LinkedIn profile. That's why we wanted to look for the LinkedIn company profile first as opposed to the website. It's just gonna give us more accurate um, scraped results here. From there, once it finds a profile, it's gonna look for that contact's work email. If it doesn't find the contact's work email, it's gonna look for their personal email. And then from there, based on what it finds, it'll start to drop all of these different 
pieces of contact information into the appropriate row. And then finally, it will consolidate all of the contact information here at the end. So let's take a look at how this is structured. So this step one here in terms of finding the people, we're going to plop in this LinkedIn plus URL value because we can use the company LinkedIn URL or the company domain, which we have. Then you're going to input the job titles you're looking for, any job titles that you want to exclude. And then what I found really helps, especially with this local business search, right? You might have um, franchise type of businesses and you want to be really specific on the location that you're looking for. So I input the city. You run that column. And then in terms of looking for the work email, you're going to pull the full name in from the contact at, the, uh, at their LinkedIn profile, the website domain, and then there's a conditional formula here. So this row, or this column rather, is only gonna run if the full name is found on their LinkedIn profile. So what this means is that let's say it doesn't find a profile here, now you can see that the run condition has not been met. So you're not gonna waste a bunch of credits. As long as you've got the right formula in here, you can automate this and it's, not gonna, it's only gonna run if it actually finds someone in here. And from there, if you don't find the company email, you'll search for the personal email. I like to keep this one on as run as a button. I even found a good way to reliably have it read and say, if you find a profile and you do not find the work email, then look for the personal email. So I keep this one on as run as a button and then I'll manually go through afterwards and I'll look for all these ones where the no email is found and I'll manually click to run it. Um, if you have suggestions on how I can write a better formula in here to make what I'm looking for work, drop it in the comments below. I would really appreciate it. And then from there, everything is all set up to um, automatically consolidate all the information here. So you're just gonna wanna map the piece of contact information that you need to your table, consolidate it appropriately, and then boom. Now you've got your next round of enriched contacts. The final step in this process is I'll go ahead and take all of the contacts where an email wasn't found. And I will upload their website domains into snove.io or Snovio. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Let me know about that one in the comments below too. Um, but this one's super useful because I can just upload the website URLs and it will go and search and enrich the remainder of those leads for, for me. And then as a final step, of course, I will take all of the emails that I find and run them through Never Bounce and only use the deliverables from these batches. But that's all I got for you for today. I hope you found this useful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. But other than that, I will see you on the next video.